I remember everything about my family. Um, oh, sorry, homie. When the fireman said everyone to get out, so I woke Dad up, just put a jacket on him, got his walking stick. Someone else's smoke alarm went off on a higher floor, but lower down to us, and that's when I decided, no, something's not right. Five years ago, on the 14th of June 2017, a massive fire engulfed a tower block in West London, in one of the richest boroughs in the UK. 72 people died in the fire, and it is one of the worst disasters in modern history in the UK. The Grenfell Tower fire tells us a lot of things about the state of housing, but there's one thing in particular that it really does show, and that's how people with disabilities are treated within that system. I was shocked to find out that one in five people who died in the fire had a disability. But how did some of the most vulnerable people find themselves at the front line of this tragedy? We've been looking at the lives of disabled residents in Grenfell Tower, and they've all got a familiar story to tell about how their warnings were ignored, about how their safety was compromised and also how they're still fighting for change. But we've been speaking to Emma O'Connor. She was a disabled resident that used to live in Grenfell Tower. In 2012, she was given a health assessment which advised her that she should be placed in the ground floor flat. Instead, she was placed on the 20th floor of Grenfell Tower. So they completely messed up. What problems were you having on a daily or weekly basis with the lifts in Grenfell Tower? Uh, they would constantly break down. Uh, when I had a hospital appointment, I was forced to um, walk down the stairs. So how many flights of stairs was that? Be? It was the 17 flights and then the, um, the two when you got down to the mezzanine level. I was um, on both of my crutches back in the tower. Whenever the lift uh, she broke down, she would report it. She wasn't happy with it because it really did affect her. She couldn't go up the stairs. She had severe disability. It would have been very, very, you know, it's not something she could have done or would have been able to do at all. So I called Timo um, and said, look, both lifts are out. When are you going to come and fix them? I want to get back into my property. And uh, this was the occasion that today accused me of being a grandmother. It just seems every complaint you used to make um, would never be recorded because they're like, oh, it's another complaint. We, you know, we don't want to be looking like we don't know how to do our job properly. Were you ever contacted by the tenant management organisation or the council of what to do in the event of a fire? specifically when you are a resident with disabilities? No, never. And this wasn't just the experience of Emma, but that of so many disabled residents who lived in Grenfell Tower. Residents of the Grenfell Tower have been giving evidence to the Grenfell Inquiry, which is looking into what happened on the night and also what led to the fire in the first place. From the inquiry, we can see that disabled residents were raising issues on things like lifts breaking down, being housed on higher floors, and the complaints not being listened to for years before the fire. And also, eight years before the fire, the tenant management organisation who ran the block on behalf of the council was given a red warning about fire safety issues with disabled residents and vulnerable residents. On the day of the fire, I got a call from my sister. She told me that there was a fire and what I was seeing was unbelievable. I, you know, this is something you probably see in movies, you know. I just didn't believe that Grenfell Tower was on fire. When the firemen said everyone to get out, so I woke Dad up, just put a jacket on him, got his walking stick, and then just, yeah, I had to tackle the stairs with him. I was walking backwards, supporting him. Yeah, by the time we got down, you know, he was 
It was exhausted. We had no uh, kind of evacuation equipment there, like an evacuation chair. I thought, you know, was common or standard issue in, uh, in high-rise buildings. So, I mean, all of these things just displayed that there was complete disregard for uh, disabled people's safety. To be honest, I, I, I stayed in shock for about six months. One of the longest days of my life, I, you know, I can recall, other than waiting to find out what has happened to my family, you know. But it was very close, close family, you know. There was no secret that we did not keep from each other and did not tell from each other. And the problems continued long after the fire too. Kensington and Chelsea Council organised for residents of the Grenfell Tower block to be placed in temporary accommodation, including hotels, after the fire. But for so many disabled residents, these hotels were just not suitable for their needs. Where were you homed after the fire? Uh, two hotels, one in Earl's Court, um, which the toilet broke and they expected me and my partner to go down five floors to the lower ground to use the toilets. So they gave us a one room, five of us. The council didn't think about if that place was safe for him or not. The bathroom had no, it was not equipped for a disabled person. And there was once where he did, we, we, we were washing him and he, he, managed, he actually slipped. Part, part of the problem was is that the, the people who were major contributors to, the, to all our problems leading to the fire were still in their places of power, still in charge, still in charge of us after the fire. And it's just, it was constantly the same thing, like, come on, you guys, can you just wake up? You're, de you know, you're dealing with other human beings. One of the main recommendations from the Grenfell Tower inquiry so far is that residents who won't be able to evacuate themselves be given a personal evacuation plan. So these are for people with disabilities or reduced mobility. But while we've been filming this, we found out from the Home Office that they won't be implementing personal evacuation plans for disabled residents because they say it's not practical, proportionate or safe. So we spoke to Fazile, Policy Director at Disability Rights, to talk about this and other lessons that can be learned from the Grenfell Tower. Government's announcement last week that they're not going to implement personal emergency evacuation plans was such a blow to the Grenfell survivor group, such a blow to disabled people who can't self-evacuate. 40% of disabled residents of Grenfell Tower died in the fire and that just shouldn't have happened. I saw it when I was reading the inquiry, mm. when I saw how residents kept flagging issues mm. and were repeatedly ignored. Yeah. Do you think there's a culture there that needs to shift? There was a real defensiveness. You know, there were residents who were living in the block and, the, and they knew the block better than anyone. A high proportion of black and minority ethnic groups in the tower, high proportion of disabled people. And I think, you know, those two groups found themselves in the Grenfell Tower and found themselves ignored and, and invisible. What lessons do you think need to be learned from Grenfell about how councils and politicians mm. Uh, deal with housing, specifically housing for people with disabilities? Having more attention paid to people with special needs, having a better record kept of, you know, and, and being updated, you know, keeping in contact. It's not like, okay, we know that this person living here, they have such and such a disability. No, you know, keep, stay in contact with them. You need updates, their, their conditions can change, they can worsen. Sometimes I tell myself it's just a nightmare, it's a dream. I wake up and everything goes back to normal. It's painful. Uh, it's, it's hard to explain. It's, it haunts you. Like five years on, no justice, no changes. So my life has changed. My life has been different. I don't wish this on, on anyone, you know. I don't want anyone to go through what we are going through and what we're having to go through. The people that I spend my time with are no longer there.